All right, back in the basement, guys. And uh, training day today, day one of training to kick off. I have not trained for the last couple of days. Hope everyone had a good Thanksgiving. I did on a personal level, on a training level, not the best time for me. Took off Thursday because we hosted Thanksgiving here at my house. So I had a lot of prep to do, no big deal. Was gonna train Friday, Saturday instead. So just push things back by one day. But middle of the last week, body started feeling weird. So my ears have been bothering me. Went to the Minute Clinic down the street and got diagnosed with double ear infections. Not fun, but doable. My body has also been really achy, really in my tailbone, my knees and my ankles. So much so in the middle of the night I just wake up because everything hurts and just aches that I can't go back to sleep or get comfortable. It's been super annoying. And I've just been generally fatigued overall. And it came on all of a sudden, which is weird because like, the week before, last week was a deload week for me, so I don't think it's from training. Uh, I took a COVID test, negative, but those things have been really unreliable for me in general, but haven't been feeling great. So you're here, day one, squats. Gonna really try to make sure I dial it in, put in stuff in the app accordingly, swallow my pride and put, you know, that I'm not feeling the best and see what it does in terms of numbers. But I always like to come down here and start by riding the bike just to kind of get things moving because it is almost 1.15 right now on a Monday and I've been sitting at my desk doing work for the past three and a half or so hours, four and a half hours actually, uh, after dropping the kids off at school. So trying to get a little bit of blood flow, watch my boy John Hack on the TV, which you guys can't see. I figured I'd just take you along and share some feels today. So let's get after it. So in addition to riding the bike, the next thing I always do is I just come over here to the pull-up bar and I got these new extenders on it, which allow me to actually get up off the ground completely for a full stretch. And that's all I do, just hang for a little bit. Get my shoulders a little bit loose. Feels good to just kind of decompress. Sometimes I'll swing my legs a little bit, other times not. Sometimes just come in here, adjust my grip, my hand position. Just get a good stretch in the shoulders. Next thing I do on a daily training basis at least is get the ab mat, put it down right in front of a bench and just do some single leg work. Ugh. Work on getting a stretch. Try to get straight. Oh, this one feels good, especially because as I mentioned, I've been sitting at a desk for the last couple of hours. So I tend to everything gets tight in this area. So I try to get my chest up straight, push my glute through. What I'll also do sometimes with this stretch is kind of just turn to the side a little bit. A lot of stuff that I do is kind of straight on, so I don't have the best mobility when it comes to side to side stuff. But I'll get that really big stretch in. Because today is a leg day, what I'll also like to do is I'll actually like work some ankle stuff in. So I'll kind of lean forward on this ankle, kind of just try to sit into it. Come back, back and forth. Just kind of work on this a little bit. Nothing too major, because I don't have a ton of time to train. So in an ideal world, I'd spend a lot more time in mobility and getting loose. In a real world scenario though, ain't nobody got time for that. So again, same thing on this side. Ooh, old man is tight. Been sitting way too long. Push through, feels good. And kind of work this both ways. So like right now, quad, glute, take a break from that, let it rest, but push forward on that ankle. I'm trying to get some movement in there. Just rock a little bit. So since today is a lower body or a squat day, and one of the things I struggle with is my squat depth. On squat specific days, I'll also do some other stuff. So I have these wedges in. I don't think they're anything significant. They might be like 15 degrees or so. So I have wedges, then I have a kettlebell. And what I'll do is basically just get on these wedges, get the kettlebell in a good position, get down, just kind of sit in here and sink. So I give it some time, just cause this old man body needs some time to acclimate. And all I'm doing is I'm using my, Elbows to push my knees out and working on getting my butt down. This feels pretty good, which means your boy is tight. 
So I'll sit here for a little bit. I'll work again those ankles a little bit, just kind of roll them back and forth on them, side to side. Forwards, getting them loose. Come up, give myself a little bit of a rest. Again. And I try to kind of do a slower descent on these a little bit. You can do what you gotta do, and then sit and stretch. Just wanna spend some time in this position. Helps open things up a little bit better for me than just doing a bunch of rep work. And then what I'll also do, so after I feel pretty good, is I will take the wedges away. So I squat flat foot, but initially getting things warm, those wedges help. So again, flat foot, same kind of thing. In squat stance, send and sink. And because I have this mirror on my side, I take a look and see that I can get in pretty good position this way. Leaning forward a little bit, putting some pressure on those ankles, trying to force my heels down. Again, just trying to get loose because this is going to help with squats. All right, let's get after it. All right, starting to warm up. I put in my uh, pre-training survey on Juggernaut and it actually did drop my intensity. So initially what it had me doing was a couple of sets at 475. Based off how I'm feeling though, it dropped that to 445. So we'll see how that goes the rest of the day. We're here gonna warm up with the bar and then add weight and get to our working sets. All right, 225. Get a lot of questions from people, or I see a lot of people ask questions also, outside of just me, about when to put a belt on. I typically will put my belt on around 225 to start. One of the things I like about this particular belt, the Powell belt, is that I don't have to cinch it, so it's loose enough where it's not really too tight, but I can still exhale and I can still brace against it, and that's what a belt's for, to brace against, so we're doing that. One of the things that I do that I don't think I've talked too much about is also when I typically squat, I like to have my pinkies on the rings. That's like as tight as I can get to get as tight as possible without messing up my wrists, elbows, shoulders. But when I warm up, I start with a little bit wider grip, and kind of work my way in until I get to the heavier weight. So that helps. All right, so 315. Still not gonna tighten my belt just yet. It's not heavy enough. Going rings on this one. Rings on the rings. All right, so this is 405. That's gonna be my last warm up. I'm gonna put on my wrist wraps now, just because I forgot. Wrist wraps are not something I typically think about, but I wear them when I compete, so it makes sense to wear them when I train, right? So we're gonna do this. Also going to tighten my belt this time. Just do this for a single before we jump into our actual working sets. Take my normal grip on the bar as well. I felt pretty good. All right, so getting ready to do this uh, top set and 
one of the things I'm gonna start doing again now that I'm doing like competition movements is utilizing this rep one velocity tracker. You guys have seen this in a lot of my videos. I always get questions about it. It's a velocity tracker, just so I know where I am. So I set that up to the bar, turn it on. Just gotta sync it with my phone. I like this just because it helps me dial in RPE when I rate it. Like things can feel a certain way, they can look a certain way, which is good information to go off of. But this is just like a third level, if you will, or a third layer that helps me dial in even a little bit better. So let me go ahead and connect. There we go. We're connected, so we're good. So a bunch of triples today. Again, 445 is what we're starting at. Might stay 445. Might go up a little bit if these feel and move good. Might go down a little bit if they don't feel or move good. So we will see. great necessarily I'd probably put those at a six and a half felt a little taxing uh, but we'll see what we go from here all right so I'm trying to keep the rest times more minimum today because the weight is somewhat lighter lighter in a percentage wise but intensity wise based on how I'm feeling maybe not um, for those wondering that first set was average of 0.47 so for me that tells me that it should be like an RPE five based off of that. But based off how I felt in the other factors, I rated it higher. We'll see how this holds up. Might actually loosen my belt one latch. See if that helps a little bit. Let's go another triple, 445. Feel about that same, but it moved 0 0.52 this time, so even better. So I need to rate that a six. All right, so based off of that data and what I've put into Juggernaut, it's telling me it wants me to go up. So instead of 445, we'll be doing 455. And this is one of the things that's like, you know, normally, or in most days, I don't feel great today, right? I don't think the weight's moving well. The sensor tells me otherwise. I might be inclined to fudge the data a little bit, meaning increase the RPE in Juggernaut. That way I don't have to go up and wait, or I would just choose to not go up and wait. But I'm really trying to be better about this. And since I'm filming this, it's telling me to go up. I'm gonna go up. All right. 455. Let's do it. On days like this, it's really helpful to have these visual cues. I have the three empty circles behind me, which stand for the lights on the powerlifting platform. It's up to me to make those white. Also right in front of me, looking at the There Is No Tomorrow banner. I need this motivation. And that was 0.48, so that was better than my first set. And not bad from my last set, and 10 pounds heavier. All right, good for me. All right, so based off that speed, the last one, how the other one's gone, 
I put the last set as a six as well. That means Juggernaut is feeding me more weight. So this is 465. My goal here is to move this. I'm aiming for 0.45 seconds. I don't know what that is in my head, but that's what I want the actual rep one to read when I'm done. So let's go. Three reps. Point four eight. Take that as a big win. All right, so squats are done. So I'm moving on to my working sets of my next exercise, which is feet up bench. So for feet up bench, I actually like to put my feet up on the bench. I don't like to do Larson presses. Not saying that you can't, but like for me, like a Larson press where your legs are typically out, that puts a lot of stress on my lower back, which I have issues with anyways. And just makes more sense to put my feet up here. Now I have like four sets of four. It asks for like as high as 220, I'm going with 225 rounding up. Because for me, I find that my feet up bench actually is probably pretty similar to my regular bench, which means I'm not using very good leg drive, if any leg drive on my normal stuff. So I just like to get my traps, shoulders set. Now, I do have some other accessories on today. They're scaled back a little bit because of my readiness rating previously, but I'm probably gonna try to work this in. So I have GHD, leg extensions, back raises, or back extensions, and then maybe some abs. So probably won't show you much more bench because it's gonna look very similar to that. I'll probably show you one of each at least. Ooh. All right, I always get lightheaded after doing these. So it's a 12 GHDs, 20 pound medicine ball. All right, so leg extensions is also on the docket for today. And surprisingly enough, this is probably one of the most commonly asked about machines that I have. You get comments on this all the time. Hey, how are you liking this one still? So if you're still watching the video and you want to see an updated video on this, let me know now. I like to do single leg extensions for this. I don't go overly heavy, number one, just because this is an accessory movement, but also number two, leg extensions in general tend to put a lot of stress on my knees. So we just wanna make sure that I do what I'm supposed to do. So 10 to 12 reps. And then just switch right to the other side. There we go. All right, so one of the things I've been adding in recently are back extensions, so using the GHD. Got a 35 pound dumbbell. I really try to make sure I'm just lifting with my glutes and my lower back and not pulling the weights up. So don't go overly heavy on this. Extension and just up. Now, this is one of the ones that I always get lightheaded after, so I always, I'm sure, take it nice and slow getting off this beast. 
Also, we're gonna show you another bench set. Why? Because bench has been going really well today. This is my last set and I'm up a lot of weight from where I should have initially started. So this is 245 for a set of four. And if you ever have the opportunity to show more weight, especially on a bench press, you damn right you're gonna show more weight on a bench press in a YouTube clip. I feel like that was still around a five, five and a half. Nice. All right, last exercise of the day is medicine bowl Russian twists. You can probably see at the clock, it's 227 right now. So considering I started the bike at like 115, did my warm up and lifted. The training session was actually just like an hour of actual lifting, which for me is great. Obviously it helps to superset in stuff like that. As I struggle through these medicine ball twists, a lot of times I skip abs if I'm late on work. Um, but today, since everything went really fast, part of that was because the volume and intensity was cut down. Um, we're just gonna do abs today. So I appreciate you guys taking the time if you've made it this far. If you wanna see these videos every now and then, let me know in the comment section below. And if not, let me know in the comment section down below. Thanks, and as always, stay big.